I've spoken about the Singapore way, our way, with people at the heart of our policies, planning for the long term while adapting to near-term circumstances and doing it together, working in partnership. Our budget reflects this principles, not just in the way we spend, as I had explained, but also in the way we fund our spending. Many MPs in this House has called for more M&Ms, not the sweet chocolate candy, but more and more. I too like M&M, but our resources are finite, but our needs are growing and diverse. To square the circle, we need to use the right tools for the right needs with these principles in mind. And we need all of these tools to balance our budgets in the medium term. So let me talk about each of them in turn. First, taxes. As individuals, we can all accept that we should pay for what we use. Similarly, each generation should pay for their own needs. We had debated this at last year's budget, and I'm glad that many of you agreed with this. Nevertheless, there have been some reservations raised over the approach and timing of our plans to raise taxes going forward. Ms. Fumiha urged the government to postpone the GST hike for as long as possible. She suggested that the funds that we've set aside for this term for various future expenditures, like the MGP and the use of borrowing for future infrastructure expenditures, could provide sufficient fiscal space to postpone the GST increase. I appreciate Ms. Fu's suggestion to delay this, and let me assure her and members of this House that the decision to raise GST was not made lightly. As a government, it is our responsibility to anticipate and plan ahead for future needs. While doing so, we also need to distinguish between one-off factors and underlying structural increases. The GST increase is needed to support structural increases in healthcare spending, among other important needs like preschool education and security. Such healthcare spending is of a completely different scale and nature from the cohort-based package set aside for the medical generation or the pioneer generation. As mentioned earlier, the government has systematically laid the foundation of a broad-based healthcare system that supports not only seniors, but all Singaporeans, regardless of their age and income. We now provide significant subsidies in all care settings, up to 80% in our public hospitals and for long-term care services, up to 70% for specialist outpatient services and up to 75% for polyclinics. MOH expects to spend $6.1 billion in 2019 alone. $6.1 billion in 2019 alone to subsidize patient bills through existing permanent schemes that all Singaporeans enjoy. This does not even include spending to enhance our healthcare facilities and to research more effective treatments. Now, as our population ages, spending on permanent healthcare schemes and other parts of the healthcare system will continue to increase structurally. Funding this requires a structural increase in our operating revenues. In other words, the base of our healthcare spending is rising. And over and above this rising base, we have special packages set aside for our pioneers and Medica generation. Every aging society faces similar structural spending pressures. A recent OECD paper highlighted in the median OECD country, public healthcare expenditure is projected to increase by almost five percentage points of GDP between 2018 and 2060. Five percentage points. The OECD's recommended approach is no different from ours. To address a growing fiscal burden from higher healthcare spending and demographic change, without further ballooning of public debt, there is a need for this government to raise primary revenues. The median OECD government is estimated to require additional revenues of 6.5 percentage points of GDP 
by 2060, 6.5 percentage point. Now, what does 6.5 percentage points of GDP mean? To put it in perspective, we expect to raise about 0 0.7 percentage points of GDP with the planned 2 percentage point GST increase. So you compare 6.5 percentage point to the 0 0.7 percentage points of GDP that we have, and you see the scale of, of the issues in many places. And we have not yet, we have yet to decide on the exact timing of the GST increase. We will exercise care when doing so. We will continue to monitor the prevailing economic conditions, <laughs> trends in expenditure, and buoyancy of our revenues.